Yo, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs back with the Full Circle Podcast. Come, oh I got Manifest Six. Is manifest it just Manifest six. or Manifest? So, six? Manifest goes a long way, actually. Um, believe it or not, I'll tell you this story because I never told you this, but um, Manifest Destiny was actually a production group. There was five I of us. I remember that you have another Manifest Destiny. Page. There, so I came up with the name. We didn't know what to. You know what to be or whatever, and and they changed, and people split did their own thing or whatever, which is cool. And they mm-hmm. got placements now, and they they're making money. They're doing the thing. I'm proud of them. Whatever. We keep contact, but they were like, you know, keep the name. Uh, it's your idea, and I kind of just ran with it. You know right. what I mean? And six. So manifest pe- destiny is manifest. Man, that's where it came from, and then manifest meaning like the manifestation of my life. You know what I choose. Mm-hmm. You know where it came from. You know where I'm at now, and fruition and six comes from my life path and six really is my other personality that's stuck inside my head that'd be yelling at me and trying to cause trouble and shane's like nah like is that the deep voice that's when i come alive you know what i mean and i i battle with that and she you know my girl even you know sees it and it's really a part of my life that i just channel through music and poetry Hmm. you know and the production too so that's epic. Yeah, your beats are dope as fuck. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, your beats are dope know. as fuck. Though. Thanks, dude. I I make everything. People, people fucking... don't know that this motherfucker produces. Like it's it's so low key. Like most of the shit, most of my music is produced. By I know. Me. I'm just I'm proud of that. I love when producers make their own music because it's it's your brain. That's mm-hmm. how you. It's the full scope. It's your window. You know. Yeah. As a lyricist, as a rapper, it obviously started with me just painting my cave, like my picture over canvases, production already made, beats, searching like that, the typical YouTube scrolls. You scratching the surface. But a lot of those beats that I was fucking with, I realized they were very simple, very. Very just three instrument type shit. Also, that's a good thing though, because that carries mm-hmm. you as an artist, and that, and you specifically, you're a type of artist that needs to be carried because your sound and your voice is important. My problem with beats is I just want to keep playing them, like I the know. improv, like the jam. My problem is I'm I want to keep make, building. I think every song should be twenty minutes. I agree. <laughs> Shout out to Tool and making people could, people albums could grip and shit out, like People that. could grip out pieces, but yeah, that's a that's I might. Sh- I do have a project where my songs are ridiculously short, like a minute, a minute and a half it's each. most of my music. But I think I'm going to drop a project that's just... You want to know why I make short songs? One thing. Uh, yeah? Hmm. Yeah. You should. Do whatever you want. just got me stoked thinking as about all you. it. I don't know if you guys can tell how stoked I just got. <laughs> <laughs> but I just got so stoked. But you Shout want- out to these sunglasses. They were in my car. I don't know who they are, but... And I just bought these. <laughs> the hater blockers, dude. The hater blockers. But um, you want to know why I make short songs, though? Because mm-hmm. it makes people angry. Why? Oh, because they want to hear more? Because they want to hear it more. And that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? And It has to have replayability, though. Exactly. And exactly. And mm-hmm. I was just talking to her about this. How I make my albums. My dog. My dog loves my music. It's proven like he... <laughs> he gives me faces when he likes this shit. That's like, great. I can tell, and I know, like, yo, that song's going <laughs> on the like project. So, that's shout out awesome. to my dog, Puppy, yo. He's a Rottweiler. I love him to death. That's and, awesome. You know. So, you have, like, a, kinda... sca- a, a scale with that. That's fucking awesome. It's like awesome. a frequency. It's like, it's like we, you know, it's like telekinesis in a way. Like, I know what he's thinking, almost, you know. I can read that shit. It rarely happens, but I'll just like, if I don't like it, I'll like, I won't even go past the third line. Oh, no. I'll you you know. Yeah. You know, like, yo, this shit's good, but it's not. It's being forced. It's you can feel it when it's being forced. Cause just because it's a good beat doesn't mean your vocals need to be on it. Type of course. Shit. Of Protection. course. I make shit for everybody. And mm-hmm. a lot of my stuff I don't even rap on. For real. No, it's hard to rap on your own shit. It's I really don't even weird. write to my own beats. Yeah, it's a lot of them. It's really hard. So unless you're building the song around like something you want to really do, which is a little more time consuming, but I'd be making shit really fast. That's like my whole thing. I just like, there's something about just not thinking and just getting it over with. And like, so like what oh, this isn't cool in tw- 30 seconds. I'm on to a new sound. I'm ex- like, of course. Like, there's something to like speeding it up like that. But then when you have this idea and you need this sound or you need that, but you can't get it, that's when 
that's when the creation gets frustrating because, and that's why I started learning everything, like every instrument, every form of production, whether it's like imagery or just viewing things, it's important to have that scope for me as a creator because otherwise you're depending on, I've had a lot of sessions where I run the audio for someone vocally and they're like, I just want to sound like you. And I know a lot of engineers have heard that. I know a lot of engineers that are musicians have heard just make me sound like you. And all it means is it's a compliment. They just want to sound crystal clear. Of course. But what it really means is like how you're tweaking that shit. You know what I mean? It's not like they're not trying to make your shit. You know what I mean? But with that, with the vocal exercises like that, though, the live performances and everything like being created like that, I I think that, um, Shout out I, th- the bugs. I think that I think that uh, what do I mean? I think that there's a way that artists should uh, should show the live aspect more. That's why instead of dropping projects and anything, that's why I've been doing the live aspect because I all I do is throw shows. So if I drop some new audio or something, I want it to be what it's going to sound like at the show. Of course. I don't want to do you know like uh, a thing and then sound completely different live. So I think, dude, I wish that a lot of more artists, period, not local, not big, like literally every artist was doing live shit. I'm talking about painters, period, like time lapse, if it's a a time consuming thing like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to see the process of the song being shown, the act, the final product. So, like, that's why, like, for artists, like, I see, I just see time-lapse painting videos, like, like a minute, like, just show how quick it was made and the meaning and the definition of the emotion. How for much a musician, time put into it. it. Yeah, for a musician, it doesn't mean a music video for me, because, like, music videos are dope. Like, I love music videos. That's, like, I want a shit ton of, but, like, what I see in my head for a video mm. is a billion dollar budget dude yeah like, like it's yeah. just not gonna fucking happen mm-hmm. so like that's one side of it but the other side is like the point is i want people to come to shows so you're stuck in the middle no i'm stuck in the live i'm stuck in you oh i see what, i see what you're saying i see what you're there's saying. a reason it's i constantly. say every show like i start every show with are we alive like I, that's the question i ask when i start shows that's like literally the point because i want to do live shit like and have people pull out to do it, and live. it's fifty percent in the, in the artist. It's not just the music; it's the performance. Mm-hmm. Who that character comes to like to life, charisma. That's what it. That's what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> so I the, see what you're saying. For a painter, the performance is is them painting, of course. But to have it seen in its entirety to the final product, and I noticed that from which you know, is doing yeah, like a doing live this shows concept, that final, you know. final product. And I did want to say that about as far as doing these shows, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when your first show ever was. It but was with you. Was it really? I never performed. I just made oh, music word. and chilled in my house like a fucking ant under Dude, a rock. Dude, I, I wanted to say, like, I was saving it for this, that from that time till obviously this past weekend is completely different night and day, like, as far as crowd control delivery. I appreciate your notice. Everything. That. Dude, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's actually wild because... Usually, like I said, for events, I'm picky. I don't let anybody just grab the microphone. But usually you don't see growth like that, like just just flip. Like it went from like I wasn't sure if it was your first show, but I know it was your first show in a while for sure because of the pandemic. No, it was definitely my first shit. show. So so like the, the switch and everything from that is wild. And then I remember one of the shows you didn't know, but I turned the vocals down to match how you'd be recording your songs. And it like it sounded crazy though because of how how it matched up with what you were saying, you know what I mean? Like the deep voice because it's not like the octaves on the auto tune on the pedal board live can go twelve octaves down, but you're sitting more around like a five, like a six. You're not fully deep voice. So that's actually there's a reason <clears throat> for that, mm-hmm. and the reason being is because the song I wanted it to hit a certain way in a clear way of me, you know, being critical on how my flow is and how I'm putting it down, how I'm laying it down, how it sounds to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Me personally, how I hear myself. But when it comes to the live show, that's when I wanted to match. I wanted it to 
go and coincide kind of like an ad lib to me because oh, I'm so coming in that metal regular aspect. Regular lot, like regular words. Of course, I was trying <laughs> so, uh, to make it. So it might have threw you off a little bit even beyond that when I made it low and you didn't know the first time. Of but course. To me, it was like, as far as being cohesive with whatever's there, if there's backing vocals, it was that. But if you're me- meaning to m- melodize with it, be melodically matched, that's different. But yeah, dude, it's either way, it sounds fucking epic. I appreciate like, there's a that. reason I have aftermarket on all the time. <laughs> like, that's just a And we're waiting on the remix. I got you. I got you. The thing is, every time I make a song, it's always like, I get there, I'm like, all right, I got to make something new, and then I make something new, and then... Dude, you're always on the move, like, dude. Yeah, I always have to, like, leave. The buggy's so. always on the move, bro. <laughs> Necessary, dude. You know? But that's Fucking a good thing. If I see you sitting <clears throat> down, and you're not doing shit, I'm going to be mad at you. If I you mean, can't dude, get to I me... Be, I because be you're busy, sitting, I'm dude, I be sitting hard. There's... Look at me. When, I when, when, when you oh. Well, when you make it and we get to where we want to get, all we're going to do is sit and look around. We're going we're gonna to be like, yeah. we did it. And you're going to go sit over there and you're going to be like, yeah, this is cool. We did it. We're just going to sit. Everything's about sitting, I realized. <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, I know just, what you mean by that. Just get comfy. Once you're comfy, you sit on the beach. You just sit there with and a that's, pina colada. Like, and that's, that's the vision. That's another thing I wanted to talk about, too, is shout out to people in general because you, you don't see what goes on behind the curtains. Mm-hmm. Everybody you don't see the stress shit, yeah. of even as minor as getting like a filling in your tooth. Like, you think mm-hmm. that shit bothers you on top of your stress and I've your seen life. My gen- I've seen a lot of people in my generation bitching about it online recently. <laughs> a lot of people are dealing with the tooth You know what shit. I mean? But like, People, you know what it is? It's the fucking food we ate as children. Oh, yeah. That destroyed our shit. All that shit. Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. I drank a lot of that growing up. Fuck that. I'll drink sugar straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me sugar. I'm good. He's like, I don't even know where this water came from. I don't want nothing else. I don't want jelly. Sick. I don't want peanut butter. I want sugar. <laughs> Just grind it up. Put it he in said, a bowl. Here we go. Yeah, the sugar's where it's at, dude. That's where it's, it turned into. It's a problem. That's, like, the thing. You got that rush. Beyond everything that, like, fuck party drugs, dude. It's sugar. I was that kid jumping couch to couch because of how much sugar I consumed. I'm sure of it. That was before sugar for me. <laughs> that was I mean, we were before. wrestling, too. You know what I mean? It was, thank you, thank Did God you have the little WWE H. thing? I fucking hate Triple H. Is that your guy? No, well, Triple H was my guy for a time, but Shawn Michaels. Your guy. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is shit. Shawn Michaels. I like Shawn Michaels. Triple H, I mean, I was The Rock. I hated Stone Cold. I love Kane. Kane Every, was great. Dude, if you don't like Kane, you're, I hate you. I know. Kane got, Undertaker's Kane's great, dope. but Kane, man. Rey Mysterio is cool Rey Mysterio. Shit. I had a mask. A real one. And uh, shout out to my buddies. Brother Dennis, who I donated to because he loved uh, he loved WWE so much when I grew up. Dude, with. Rey Mysterio was cool as fuck when he came out. I was, just, oh my god! If anybody made me do stupid shit on a bed, it was fucking Rey Mysterio. Oh, I was trying to do dude, all the you, all the six one nine with no rope to grab. You were you jumped like kicked yeah, yourself sideways like I tried but it. spun. I tried it. Actually, I've actually done that. Back to my private That's identity. So Shout out to Ray Mysterio with the private identity. <laughs> I think it's, it's, dude, it's necessary. Of course. Put a cool sound here. We get serious. <laughs> that was a good Mate. sample. I'm going to sample that. We get serious. I'm going to sample that. <laughs> so, dude, fucking, um, what made you start making music? Actually, um, <clears throat> I just found it. Through people, actually, I didn't know people made beats. I didn't know that was a thing. Like, I had never crossed my mind, and I fell into making beats because my buddy stole. We didn't, actually didn't even steal it at that time. He had FL Studio demo. Mm. Like, we couldn't even save our projects. We were just experimenting. I, was about to, I thought you were about to say he stole the laptop. But I, love I was like, rap I know music. so many musicians so just stole my mom laptops. Brain, <laughs> my mom brainwashed me. You know how I'm mean? saying brainwashed from rock and rap. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that was kind of me. It was grunge and gothic metal because that was my mom and she loved rap music she loved 50 cent eminem and mm-hmm. you know all that shit akon and crazy shit like you but would never rock even music too 
Oh yeah, dude. I love all kinds of music, man. And that's where that's where that No, like you grew up listening to all the rock and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Cuz my dad shout out to him too. He loves Eddie Van Halen so much. He loves, you know, old classic rock and metal. And that's where that metal side comes from. Mm. And my mom loved, you know, grunge, gothic metal and, you know, stuff like that and she loved rap music too. Hmm. So it's like I get that from my parents. My dad plays guitar, bass, a little bit of drums. I play drums. You, you know, that's mm-hmm. so my, my brother played guitar. It's it's in the family, and I was I guess the one that took it serious. But as in terms of writing music, came from pain, poetry, mm-hmm. as you say, painting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not trying to spill the beans, but allow you to you know examine each one. Mm-hmm. You know, each bean. As it goes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you could use a million analogies. It's just, I guess, just how I found myself, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just mo- it was more so pain, you know, the shit I went through. Yeah, I always wrote, like, from, like, being a little kid, I was always writing stuff, like, as far as, like, poems. Like, a lot of them were love poems when I started. I'm talking about third. I see where your heart comes third from. Third grade, talking about there like, is a heart somewhere. In romantic there. love lost <laughs> in the third grade, dude. Like that's so. When I like, when I realized that I couldn't sing later on, I, like that was in third grade. I was poems. That was like I was always writing poems, but I didn't start rapping or anything until I was like 18 or any, like actually done high school and shit. Well, it's crazy because I actually found you through the Camden Ciphers. The Camden Cypher. That's dog. actually how I heard of you. That's and how a lot of people heard of me, dude. That's fucking dude, it, crazy. And you're smart for that. Dude, a lot of people got vibe. put on because of you. I want to do more. I want to do more of those, but ciphers aren't like it's not what it was. I know. Even and it's not like that doesn't take away the point for me to do it, but <laughs> I can bring them back. It's just like, especially because like they're supposed to be main rounds of it. You know what I mean? They're it, supposed to be the main like rounds of people. Down to, to, yeah, because there down. was people from every town that won, and I'm supposed to have them. But <clears throat> yeah, some got signed, some got onto some stuff, and that's real from there. But and they aren't able to be obviously used because they're signed and they're under contract on other situations. Which is fine. It's cool, but it's kind of funny because I'm like I'm like narrating you now. Yeah, like and I know a little it, bit about you. But it ties cool. into like why you do things, you know, and you realize what the business is versus what you're doing it for. Of course, and how you can still do it for the reasons you are while having it be a business. That's kind of what we were talking about before we started this, like. There's a really thin balance between it being strictly business versus strictly partying. And it needs to be a party. That's the most important thing. So to keep as much business out of it, that's basically what I'm spending my time as far as business goes. I'm keeping it as least of that as possible if I can. Which is just then it just doesn't feel real anymore. Yeah, because then it's it, yeah, it's not it's not at that point. It feels point. dead. And you're it, just yeah, like, what and is it's this like and but for? but at the end of the day, it's different because I do know what we're doing. It mm. is it's a it's a barbecue. That's the only way I you can know, describe it. No, why did you it. love it in the first place? Yeah, that's the only way I can describe it. <coughs> it's one thing, like I was saying about doing this once every couple of months. We're doing a couple of months, it's and consistent. it's consistent. Yeah, that's. I love that. That's a I family, really you know, that's a family, you know, being built. And it's different, like, it's growing like that. So when I view the industry or singles or being placed in spots where obviously you want the accolades to, and to be viewed for, and like even the singles and when you make a project or an album, it's why I haven't released an album, which I'm about to actually like next month. I'm just gonna drop a boppy John. And that's gonna be lit. But um yeah, and it's just all the quick, I already, quick I already bangers. know it. I've been performing them. I've performed them the last couple well, shows. Let's put it this way, it's lit. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking vibes. I love it. But I love it. But like the I this is what I wanted to say before we started the John. Fucking um the difference between like making a project of you know how you're like, okay, like, oh, I like this song, so I'm going to make a couple more like this, and this is going to be a thing. Or you're like, I want to make this, and you make them like that. When I've been doing the live performances for the past two years, it's not like that. It's like, I made a good song. 
this is worthy of a live performance, so I'm going to memorize it today and record it tomorrow. And that's what they've become. And once the, the live performance is recorded, like the lyric video and everything's done with Coco Evolve, I don't even think about the song. I'm on to the next one because I'm making 10 more songs that week, and whichever one I like the most is the one I'm doing. Of course. And that happened for two years. Shout out so, Coco Evolve. Yeah, they they fucking rip shit. And so since then, now I realize, oh shit, I have 50 fucking performances. And now I can look back and be like, okay, these couple belong on a thing together. You know, these couple mm. belong on a thing together. But the difference is the emotion and the feeling behind the songs are like flashbacks because I'm not writing them with this intention of going on this project. Every time I hear a song that yeah. I've done as a live take, I don't remember for real, for real. And it just reminds me of where I was when I made it, which is really trippy as I a songwriter because songwriters usually have this premise or this idea or concept of an album and this is the vibe that it's going to go in. Whereas when you're just making music, every genre, any vibe that you feel this when you wake up, depending on what you're going through in life and their personal lyrics... Looking back on it, it's like what I, what I was talking about in third grade, fourth grade. It's that poetry that I was writing for myself to like you realize make that. myself feel like that romanticized idea of yep. this girl that I had a crush on was actually happening. And that's what the music is. It's like a, like a, like a hoping and longing for a reality, but it's a form of manifestation. Of course. Because I'm speaking it into reality. Exactly. And all the moments that I'm speaking of have happened, whether it's heartbreak or good. But it's also spoken in a past tense way or, pre- or yearning for. That's the beauty of poetry. You can word things and put analogies in there that anybody takes however they take it. Of course. It's like, until it's someone, like an art gallery. Yeah. You ever until someone scenes. asks that painter, what the fuck does that you, yeah, line What do you mean? see? Like the one He's in like, the, inter, like, like Interstellar like, Greed. Like, I explained it to you, but if you asked specifically which like color, like which one, which splatter meant which splatter... I'd be able to tell you what the conversation me and my boy were having while we were painting it. Like, that's just like the music. Like, I'm sure, it's she, like a time I, I'm sure she could definitely relate to if you, if I asked Shout you out to Haley Hayes. Line, yeah, the fire, Her art is dope. Your, your that's my girl, dope. my your woman, my everything, my queen. I'm sure you could explain a specific line in the painting if we were like, yo, what, what happened at this moment? What were you thinking? And that's just like a song, dude. Just like. What does this line mean? It could be blanket statement like that, but and that's actually I can't imagine how many analogies I want to do. I or you create because I've written lines that have three meanings. I was raised meanings. on it. That's how my dad would re- raised me. He would be like the the number one analogy is like if everyone jumps off a bridge, are you going to do it? Like <laughs> at, the first one to jump yeah, like yeah. Let me uh, ask yeah, you, let me ask you this one. because I come so up. So my with quotes. dad would my dad would like as a lesson as a kid would say like six different analogies to me. To like, and he would make me repeat them back so I understood the logic. And I think that's literally the reason I'm a writer. And I don't think he ended because none of my family's musical. Like you were saying, that no one in my family, no music, not one. I'm the only musician in the whole lick of my connection of genetics. You're the chosen one. So the fact that it was all self taught, like how it was, it's just the poetry. It starts from there and it starts from the analogies, what we were just talking about. And I think it was because my dad was telling me over and over just seven, eight different analogies if I like did something stupid like cross the street without looking. Like, or would you shatter when you hit the ground or shatter the ground? Hey, well, what? Would you shatter when you hit the ground or shatter the ground? Did what? I break? <laughs> that's how that's how you respond to that to be that's a little asshole that's just gonna asshole. zoom in on you right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that, no real shit like it's important I, to like a, like to look back on memories like that as a kid to try yeah. to hone in on why the way why you are the way you are now and what decisions you make as far as what you think is cool based off of other people judging or parents or anything like that and the poetry was always looked at as weird Obviously, is of course. in my generation, growing up in the '90s and thousands, like being a poet was fucking weird. Yeah, and writing. I got a buddy who walks around with a journal. And remember the like, notes? Remember the notes you, you would write in high school like, and stuff? Remember those little notes where you would like fold them up a certain way and they would have? Oh yeah, the, yeah, 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 and had number and colors. That's when I was writing yeah, poems, yeah. in, dude. 
I was writing poems That's and that creative. shit, giving it, giving it to. They would. Oh my god! You know how many girlfriends I had for a day? Like we held hall, hands down the hallway in sixth grade, Bro. and then the next day they were kissing another boy in the hallway. Oh, uh, dude! Remember those little sixth grade relationships? That was weird. <laughs> was it even? That's one? weird stuff. No, it wasn't. It was, was it just, really even. I think it was it's more like, of like a holding hands thing, like a. It's like. Oh my gosh! Here's a stratification I wish to hold, but it won't hold. <laughs> Writing, writing love poems. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to be with you till I'm dead. No. Love you through all the pain. See you at 40 strife. at the reunion. Using words like strife and shit. Strife. <laughs> <laughs> Using words like strife and shit. Oh my I'll never God. forget that. I, I, was, I thought I was so fucking clever. I did a... It, it had to be seventh grade. I should remember the girl, but I don't. Um, I got like a dozen roses and I took one rose out and I put a fake one in the middle. Oh man! And I was like, I love you till the last rose dies. Wow! Cause the last rose never dies. Wow! That yeah, is that's cla- the, yo her face right now. That, that's a good one, right? That's a good one. Yeah, that is clever. And and you, I fucking you got that. You got that. It was it, and I used it in seventh grade. That's when I used it. And I didn't. It didn't feel genuine to ever use again. So I can't. You player, you not playing. <laughs> no, I'm genuine. I didn't do no, it. No, we all know that. I wouldn't be here in this room with you, dude. If you all listen. these girls broke my heart, dude. Every single one of them. Why do you think all my songs are yearning? I'm yearning for love oh, because man. they take it and they look at you. They go, "Oh, this is sweet," and then they go like. And then they pick it back up, though. Yeah. But then there's dirt on it and stuff. You know? Yeah. It's like it's, yeah. It's damaged. Once it once it's there, it's like okay, yeah. like I still I'm still alive, but all right, bet, all right, bet. <laughs> Love songs on deck. <laughs> Shout out to that person because they really feel in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it is, dude. Love it's and life, heartbreak. Man. Yeah, everybody has emotions that they go through. You know, just don't be afraid to be you. Just you know, move on. Mm-hmm. And even though my music is like personal and stuff, like the live takes, like that. That's that was the main point. When you make a song, even if you make a song, you usually don't drop it for a few months. Of course, not I know what, that that's process. not what I was doing. I was recording the live take the day after I was writing it. So there was no like listening to it a month or two later, being like, oh, I actually don't want to put this one. I want to use this one. You know, there's always there's replacements happen. You get excited, yeah. So, but but looking back, like, oh shit, like whoa. And I'm actually starting to like, do that yeah, now too. And, and what bit. people don't know is obviously because it's music and it's poetry, and it could be generic, and I could be writing about something from two years ago, or. But what I realized is I wasn't, and I'm comfortable talking about it now. Of course, because now it's two years ago. Now it's a year ago. You're like, as insane. So anybody yes. looks at their songs a year ago, they won't know about my life and where I really was, but they'll hear their songs and they'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. I get what he means as far as it being personal because like there's lines and poetry and, and a lot of like a lot of what people don't understand is when I write stuff, it's just like when I drum, they think, um, they think that I'm drumming and that the musicians are following me. I'm literally doing what they're playing. Of course. Kind of like what you saw with Carney with the thing. That I was all like, improv. That was his, I, it was his bass line. What I was doing on the drums was him. It dun, wasn't dun, me dun, and dun, him dun, playing dun, with dun, me. Yeah. yeah. It was. That was because he started with that. So that's how all my writing is. It's like kind of based around what's given to me at the time. And given around so what i literally mean is like text messages if someone says something profound to me that's a line and i put it in the song and i know if they listen to my shit or not if they peep it if they like remember but a lot of people don't even remember the shit that they say to me sometimes <laughs> sometimes people don't realize how profound they are with just being genuine it has nothing to do about compliments or complaining it's like just being it's you. something about being genuine and allowing yeah. that person, that full yeah. person of you being in the environment and not this, what we were talking about ego. Mm. And I'm just receiving it. And by receiving it, I'm able to like show the beauty that they don't even realize is there. So like a lot of my writing is that it's lines from That's appreciated. other people's perspectives of anything or me or a subject. You know what I mean? So a lot of my writing, that's why I make songs very quick. It fucks me up because, like, 
I don't do it on purpose. I don't like make a song as fast as I can just to like get it over with. Like there is a sense of laziness and I don't feel like doing it for long and I can't listen to a beat for more than five minutes. I need to hear something new. It's like the improv in me. I need to keep switching Well, you've been up. running shows so long. I'm sure you've Not even gotten... that. No, it's, it's always been like this. I just okay. need to like, I can't, listen to, I can't listen to a beat on repeat. Like, I can't. So I have to just have something done. And it's That's done why you like and, improv and jam yeah, band. Because and I need a new beat. I need something new. You need new. something that and, changes it. Yeah. Change up. And I like as, that. I as like a that. producer, it's hard to rap on your own shit a lot of times. But at that point, it's like, dude, what? Come on. Like, I have to make something that I want to do at that And you want to know my secret? Hmm. Shouts out to the Alchemist, because I'm sure 97% of the shit I wrote was to his beats. And then I formulate the beat oh, right. around my song. But there's always a blueprint Oh, like the boom bap, John, that, that, that vibe? Just, he's got so much feel. And I, I get inspiration from a lot of people, dude. People you wouldn't even expect or, like, think of. Like, like, like who's, your, who's your top three inspirations? Would they have to be in a genre or just no, all together? Any, like, period. Top three. These are the reasons. These are why. This is why my music sounds the way it does. Okay, that I can answer. Yeah. Because there's it goes on. Those ones. The Wu Tang yeah. Clan. Let's do five then. Okay, the Wu Tang Clan. Mm-hmm. Alice in Chains. Mm-hmm. I'd say a little bit of Dave East. Bones Team Seth. Shout out them. They're dope. The Who? Old squad Bones. Who's that? Check him out. Okay. He's put out over 80 mixtapes in the last 10 years. Most consistent artist I've oh, ever listened to. Oh, all right, but... Dude, crazy. I love I love artists that don't he's keep so shit in He's so alternative, too. That's how I am, bro. You can't keep shit in. Dude, just drop it. You're gonna... Just drop it. But anyways... Anyways... Back yeah. to number five, MF Doom, man. Wait, no. Is that four? Oh, you, you didn't hear it all the way through? So Wu-Tang, mm-hmm. Alice in Chains, mm-hmm. Davies... Bones. Bones. MF Doom. Oh, that is five. MF Doom. Okay, yeah, I hear it all. I hear it all. Mine would be Missy Elliott. Wow. Ludacris. Eminem. Okay. Lil Wayne. Okay, I can see that. Mm. Wayne. I don't know who the fifth one would be. But yeah, Missy you. Elliott. <laughs> facts. Missy Elliott no, beats no, wise. No, DJ fuck up. Facts, facts. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, literally, obviously, the influence of just dropping shit and hopping on anything. Like, the droughts, he, he took everybody's songs and made them better. And I listened back recently, the recording qualities are so bad, but it's what he was saying. His, Dude. His lines were ridiculous. So I actually take a lot of inspiration from Lil Wayne because mm-hmm. if you've ever seen his documentary Which one? on the Carter 3, 2008. Damn, like, I don't want to watch them all back, honestly. D- watch watch that again when you get free time. If, if yeah, Bugsy just, ever gets free time. The, when, he, when, he's, <laughs> when he's just in the hotels and shit. No, they, there's the whole process of the album because... So what happened was, they dropped the Carter 3, right? What happened was? They dropped the Carter 3, and his homie, the next morning, or the next day, I should say, runs into his tour bus. They got it on camera. They're running. They're freaking out. Mm -hmm. And Lil Wayne's recording his next album. This is literally the next morning after they dropped the Carter 3. And they're freaking out. Bro, you sold a million records in less than 24 hours. And he's like, I was recording. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. And it's like, it was the most mind-blowing thing I think I've ever seen. Just Mm -hmm. to see how hard he works. Like, this man just dropped the best album. I mean, he's the GOAT. And he was already on the next one. He's the GOAT. Less than 24 hours. Lil Wayne's the GOAT. He's straight up the GOAT. There's nobody... In that time era, in 2008, Lil Wayne was the best rapper in the world. I mean, Lil Wayne... I mean, like, Eminem, like, obviously has this thing. And, like, there's Reigns and Jay-Z and... Because of business, ninety eight. That's M&M. where business comes in. That's where all that comes in. Ninety three. Biggie. Lil Wayne is just the goat. It, all right. So, but this is this is where things get different, and this is just reality. His performances are not good. But Lil Wayne, the goat, introduced Drake. Of course. Whose performances are not good. <laughs> but he, <laughs> but he fucks shit up. See, I'm big on performing, dude. Of course. If you can't perform good, and you're not. 
on key with the shit that you're rapping on stage. You're fifty percent an artist. Doing what you're, yeah, it's not okay really with are. me. It's and not I'm sorry okay to say with that. me because you're not expressing what you're supposed to do. And and I get a song's a hit, but if you're not feeling it, don't do it. Type shit is how I feel. It's different with rock bands. Like they're playing the songs every night. They mm-hmm. have to do it every night. They have and to do the it key. the whole way through. Yeah. So as a performer, that's like how I view it. It's not like I like as a rapper, dude. You should not have backing vocals on your shit as a rapper. But with you, I understand now because you're using it as a as a harness, as a double, to, yeah, to, to, as a to, harmony, to that yeah. feeling, as that, a harmony. That, that, that ah, yeah. That, so so that. when I lowered the voice, I was fucking you up in that sense. I didn't realize that. But it's all good, bro. But Lil Charlie Wayne, Harris, like, bro. but Ludacris, it was Ludacris's fl- like his flows, the way that I switch up flows and shit. That that was my influence of that. I can see that. Eminem now. not giving a fuck about what you talk about. That was my influence from Eminem. Missy Elliott's style, just like being funky and shit. I just, love the Lambo bed. Yeah, that was like a classic. her music videos were always the most. Epic, I love so Missy she Elliott. Influ- she influenced me a lot, like visually, and fucking uh. Lil Wayne, obviously, it's just on. Like, you don't have to Wayne's top that. ten. I, don't know, I can't tell you a number five though. Now that I think about it, I can't tell you a number five. As far as like influences that really influenced me, like because that then it would have to be like because I didn't listen to rock music until I was like sixteen years old because wow. of rock band. Like I only listened to rock music because of the video game Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Really, and that's how I started playing drums. So yeah. you grew up listening to rap, though, like from the get go. I was picky. I I thought everybody that listened to rock music was racist. Straight up, we grew up in Marlton, Evesham, Waterford. Everyone was racist. Burlington. Everyone's kind well, of no, there. these are the places I grew up. Everyone's kind but of and, and Evesham. I could see what you mean by that. Everyone was very judgmental. When you're a white being, kid wearing a shirt that's a little bigger, well, you were the winner. Me being a cockroach was, of the suburbs, I understand that. <laughs> I was probably the one of the brokest kids in Marlton's that town. Weird. And my family just wanted me to be in a better school program. Marlton's weird, dude. And the school sucked. Yeah. The school was garbage. Dude, that's, I would why find my, s- that's why everybody was there. You know, For the school. <laughs> Cherokee's I don't even a good speak school. On, I'm not speaking on that. Let's no, just... we're speaking on okay, it. Okay. It's garbage. The children there that are bred are from the parents, though. It's not the kids it's, that are being like judgmental. It's, it's, uh, the parents are allowing the kids to, in majority, to be like that. Yeah, There's I a know. reason I'm an artist, dude. Like, we all rebel in our own ways. Some kids rebel by doing shit to annoy their parents. Some kids rebel against other kids. That's kind of what really happened. It was, I was, I was a kid who wore a shirt in the pool. I was insecure about my weight. But oh, wow. the second I got to ninth grade, because I wore a bigger shirt, I was a wigger. It completely changed from eighth grade to ninth grade. You want to know something So crazy? the whole view of what I was doing and felt comfortable doing. And then I realized all those kids listen to the music I didn't listen to, which was rock music and, like, that type of genre. And my shit, I just happened to listen to DMX and Eminem. Well, who doesn't listen to DMX? Everybody listened to Eminem. And Eminem. Well, Eminem's but the most, so, he sold the most It was weird, dude. It was, it's, it's weird to grow up with that shit. It and is. It I was is. already, I had, like I said, I had been writing love poems forever. So the poems slowly turned into... Just expressing anger and shit, which turned into rap disses, which turned into... It's like battling. Wait, I don't want to be an asshole and dislike that. Like, because I, I fucking... Once I started playing Guitar Hero and the drums and shit, I realized how skilled that, that you had to be to play rock music. So as much as I was judging not only the people that listened to it, all of the rock musicians ever, it was weird. It was a weird thing that I had to like come to grips with of like... Like, really realizing, the evolution okay, of bugs. <laughs> like, at, at age 15, 16, like, okay, this is, like, this is where it's at. Like, they're actually playing shit, because when I went from the Guitar Hero guitar to a real guitar, no. I just showed you today, I actually started playing guitar for, the first, good. for the first time, like, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. So I'm trying to start bass, so I feel you. I'm trying to learn every instrument, and I... But the drums are real. Yeah. So now, if you think about my drum setup, it's exact, they're tight. They're they're tight because that's how rock band drums are. That so makes, my drum uh, set is no wonder why I was loving the feel of your set. Very tight. I like that, yeah. and I like being close. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's like, it's do, do, like, do, do, that's how the rock band was, and then that's why I, because of that I can put as many cymbals like kind of flattened out. 
on top of each other. Yeah, I like you know I like that though. That's yeah, it's gnarly. It gives you a lot of extra space. It gives you gives you that. And you always got to be crunched. And then I feel like it'll give you that split second to where you feel like you can fill another thing in. Dude, you can fill. So you push yourself a little harder. Put another symbol there. Fill it in. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, hey, like you can go quick. But if you're closer, mm-hmm. you feel like you get that extra step, an extra hit in there. You know what it's I mean? It's just options. Yeah, that's where I'm talking about, it's having that versi- versatility. As a creator, that's what you need. Whether it's recording Looking yourself. like I got moose hands over here. Yeah, like. whether it's recording yourself, making beats, making your, rec- like, whatever it is, you need those options to create. Because, like, tying back into someone saying, like, I just wanted, I just want to sound like your shit. It's like, no, you want to sound like you, you just want it to sound good. But of like, course. That does take recording it with your voice. Like you said, you have to find your voice and do it. It took a long time. So like from your, from your performances from the first time to, to now, it's like, it's only been a couple of months, but yeah. it's different. It's, that's what I mean about a performer. Like some of these people who have good songs don't fucking work. And I've seen work. that. I've seen that. And I've seen that in this industry and, and, and even as being just a producer. Mm. I've seen how real people are and how real it gets. You I'm know on a, I, mean? I like I know that a lot of people aren't signed because they like a lot of the labels and shit just are just know that they're not gonna sign it. Just straight up they just like, no, nah, they're not gonna take this deal. We gotta find someone like that will. So speaking of that, there's actually a story that goes with that. Mm. And in twenty sixteen I was producing for somebody named Julito R. I. P. Killed in Philadelphia, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. R.I.P. to him. But um, we were making music together, and he was about to get signed by big, big label. And I'm not going to say the name or anything. And then they end up signing a big artist who got big to take his place afterwards. Mm-hmm. And they end up becoming a flop in the end of their career anyway. You know, but mm-hmm. R.I.P. to him. I'm not saying I would change anything. I'm not saying, you know, what I'm saying, but what, you know, It'd be crazy to see what would happen if me at 19 years old going in the industry not knowing a damn thing. You know what I mean? As to where what I know now. Yeah, it's bad. What I, I know mean, now. That's why, like. I feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's why, like, where I'm at, it's different. Like, I have. R.I.P. Hulito, though, man. Yeah, R.I.P. all the homies. It's a, it's, it's like, it's, it's a weird industry because it's a, it's obviously a business. And when you're talking about art, it's heartfelt and you feel it. So, like, what you're talking about selling is, like, yourself. So when you're doing a show, you're, like, giving your energy. So you need to know what are the lights going to be like? What's it going to sound like? Okay, is this what it is? Then I need to know that so that I can adjust for these songs to be played, depending on the sound alone. Let alone the lighting. Let alone the crowd. a lot. Let alone... It doesn't matter what time you perform. You should never worry about your set time. Worry about if there's be ready. Be, worry about the environment of the the space, of so that you can paint it and do what you're gonna do. It really doesn't matter how many people are in there. I've like I performed in front of thousands of people, and the most important benefits that I've gotten in my career have come from the shows when there was fucking ten people there. And it doesn't make sense, but it's because like it just happens to be that the person was there that like was able to really see it, it and it shit. And, that moment. And it's hard. Like, people don't understand it's harder to perform in front of five, ten people than it is to perform in front of fucking 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I love that. It's different. It's I like it's, love it's that. It's hard. It's easy with a thousand people because everybody just becomes a fucking... A part of you. ...mesh. Yeah. Everybody becomes one thing. It's not like that. Like, you can still make eye contact and fuck with certain people, but when there's thousands, you, no, you literally don't have the time to. You're just looking where you're looking. Whereas when it's a small John, that's when you're intimate, and that's where you're really making a connection with whoever's in that room. That's crazy. And it's not about... it. Yeah, it's gnarly, dude, when you're that's really... Crazy you mentioned that. When you break it down and think about it, because it's not about making eye contact with everybody. It's not about bumping into everybody and shit. It's about just completely showing your painting that's why i want to do a lot of a lot of videos and stuff with like artists and stuff just time lapsing their artwork and shit like to show that's like a different form of it it would basically be like anything like basically like a fucking 
like a runner who's running like a five minute jaunt, like a, a a lap that takes five minutes to speed up to a minute. Like, yeah, so you can see like how like you what they're actually it. doing. Yeah, I mean, that's not hard. Like that's that's kind of what a performance is. It's a condensed version of who you are. That's why the shows that's are important. Crazy. Like it it really is, dude. It's fucking awesome though because you can switch it up <laughs> depending on what your songs are. You can still you can have different versions of them. Like kind of just me playing guitar. I'm doing different versions on the guitar, acoustic versions yeah. of this shit. Like if you do if you know instruments, you can obviously do other things. You but, can construct that song so many ways for your enjoyment. Mm, it's different when you can do it yourself, though. That's why I've always wanted to play guitar, but it's I'm I was lazy as far as going up and down the strings. That shit's annoying, dude. Like going up Send and down. Send me some loops when you get in there, bro. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I got I, a, love I got that a punch. Shit. I got a bunch. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love instruments. I love the organic sounds, you know. And this is what mm-hmm. I tell producers. Everybody samples. If you're going to sample, sample be people safe around about you. It. Yeah, sample people but around also, you. also, don't be safe about it. <laughs> but also, like for real, be safe about it cuz you could really screw your career up in one second or you can make that career and get lucky and I mean, pay somebody off. I mean, you get it. They're just going to take all the money back. Here's what I'm getting at. People just be throwing loops. Just throwing loops and calling themselves a producer. If I use a loop, I'm, everything I'm throwing after you that gotta it's chop organic. The loop. They gotta chop yes, the you gotta loop. chop it, but it's all gonna be you. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, if I'm using a loop, me is going around it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not just oh, I just took all these people's loops and altered the pitch and I made a beat. Yeah, which is, I mean, sure that sounds cool, but what are you really doing? You're Fun doing thing. what a thousand other people could do mm-hmm. because they all have access to it. But how you really make yeah, it that's unique why you, gotta, you can't just you slow it your down. Sound like I love your sound. You gotta chop it. Like I feel like me and your sound together would be crazy. It will. It is. Because you have like that poppiness to it, and I have that darkness to it. And that's what I mean. I don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not pressed on it because I make music really quick. So like It'll whenever we link, we'll just make it in It'll a couple hours. We'll make a couple like a EP in a couple hours.